Oh, hello, here we are on machine learning and cloud services. Part one did clustering, part two did general optimization issues, and part three goes through specific uh, machine learning algorithms, starting with the, this particular lesson, 3A on support vector machine, SVM. It's a very famous machine learning algorithm, very mature, not, the, not changing very much and actually not getting as much use as it did in the past because uh, deep learning has uh, probably uh, replaced it in many cases because deep learning tackles the same classification problem in a somewhat more flexible uh, fashion. All right, so it's a supervised classification algorithm. We need to have uh, training data. You can actually classify into lots of different types cats and dogs and polar bears, or it can, uh, but we will actually uh, look at the yes, no, or cat versus polar bear case, because you can do the multi-class case built on top of the uh, two-class case. <coughs> and we can either use directly linear formulae, or we can use kernels and have a, a non-trivial functional dependence. So this all started with Vapnik in um, 1995, a long time ago, in uh, support vector networks. You see the link here, Springer link. And as I said here, we are going to look at the classification to one of two categories. So here we've drawn the picture here. We have some training data here, a bunch of red points and a bunch of blue points. And we need to separate them into two. And you can see that actually many lines, and for this case here, where they're well separated, there are many different lines that could be drawn. We can draw the orange line, yellowish orange line, the purple line, or the green line. And all of them separated into two categories, but some of them are probably better than others. It looks from this picture there's something more like this is better because it's uh, more clearly how uh, you want to keep things it's about the same distance away on both sides. Whereas this purple one looks a bit dangerous. If you had a point over here, which is surely ought to be red based on this picture, it will be cat we, uh, categorized as blue if you have the purple line as the divider. So SVM has a set of rules of finding the optimal line between two sets including the case which are not as clean as this, where the line actually still actually makes some mistakes. But if there happened to be a red dot over here, not much we could do about it. If there's a red dot there, um, it, it just there's a red dot there. Just says the line's not perfect. Because um, it's still gonna have to be divided somewhere around this black line. And so there's some mathematics to find the optimal uh, line or surface in a higher dimension. And so here is a, here's written again. Um, and what the methodology is to find the line that maximizes the distance to the nearest point. So to maximize this distance and maximize this distance. Um, but uh, in all ways we have, this is easy to do in two dimensions as we've drawn here. Um, here is a, 2016 uh, link here to, to which has a review which we can copy and um, this is where this uh, material comes from. So we're, we're, we're trying to define this line which you see it sort of actually clearly sort of lies between the points in some optimal fashion and we just have a we just need to maximize distances between the line and the points on the other side. So the elements that lie closest to the boundary line are called the support vectors. And they are the well, this is, I'm not quite certain if this is why they're called support vectors, but they're the ones that help us define the line. And we just need to write down some fancy mathematics. And Vapnik came up with this solution in 1995 called the chunking algorithm. And 
you just need to, there are going to be different algorithms which as we go forward, but they're all solving the same problem. Find the line which uh, pushes, which is furthest from the support vectors. And the vector, they're called support vectors because these points live in a vector space. And um, there is some standard mathematics outside the scope of this, uh, these lectures called the branch multipliers, which you use for doing, dealing with constraints in any optimization problem. And we have an objective function, and it must, uh, we must identify the closest elements to the boundary line and keep that boundary line as far as where as possible from each group. So keeping away from the group is the constraint. That's where the Lagrange multiplier comes in. And I told you when I did optimization, the constraints are quite hard to do. And there are various approaches. And um, we have to minimize the distance function of each point to this boundary line. So we have a linear constraint and a minimizing constraint, and that's a and that is, mathematically, this ends up as something called quadratic programming. Which doing in detail is outside scope here. Because we're not trying to do mathematics. So, here we have some um, support vectors. These red ones are some support vectors of the black group. Uh, these. Um, these red circles here are the support vectors for the white group. And, um, and here we have various choices. And we want the one in the middle, Wx plus um, B is parallel to the line through the support vectors. And um, we need to um, find the one in the middle. So W in that formula, Wx is uh, inversely proportional to that uh, maximum distance. I mean, let's maximize uh, 1 over W or minimize W. And um, the distance between two parallel lines is proportional to 1 over W squared. And we don't bother with the square root. We can always deal with square things because uh, remember, if you're minimizing W, you're also minimizing W squared. Um, so we have uh, this, we end up with this uh, formula here that um, we need to keep away from each group as much as possible. And um, the boundary must lie in, in must uh, satisfy this constraint that it lies between those two boundary lines. And we must do that and also, um, also ma maximize, minimize W, double W squared. And as I said, Lagrange multiplier solves this, and that's Vapnik did, and um, it, um, the vectors with non-zero Lagrange multipliers are support vectors. And then we find the support vectors, then we know W, and eventually we can find uh, the constant term B, which tells us exactly where the line runs. So Vapnik's algorithm had trouble satisfying the constraints, which are uh, were formulated as the so Karushkun Tucker rules, and that led to um, extremely intense, difficult, wasted computations to try to search for all possibilities. And so this uh, pushed people to find other solutions, and several other solutions were found. Uh, one particularly great solution was called sequential minimal optimization from Microsoft Research. That's um, 1998, and it's just, I say, it's a thousand times faster than Vatnik. And this method used, um, was used in LibSVM, which is sort of industry standard in SVM, and used uh, as the basis of many other SVMs and other, other libraries. 
Uh, SkyKit, for example, uses S3, uh, use, uses lib S3. And the trouble with S SMO is it doesn't parallelize very well, and it gets to exactly the right answer, but it's difficult to parallelize. And we need to actually change SMO if we want to do a parallel SVM. Um, so there are many approaches, again, to parallel SVM. And there is a solution from Google in 2007 called PSVM. And it uses um, standard mathematics, uh, which um, is, uh, can be parallelized because of the matrix uh, problems. Matrix problems are always easy to parallelize. And this uh, gives you much faster answers than before. But here, even here, the parallelization is not so easy to do efficiently. So this is PSVM. And then people actually decided to use the same approach they love to use in deep learning, stochastic gradient descent. Because this is an optimization problem. And so Pegasus was a, a stochastic gradient descent thing. Here we're doing lots and lots of small, uh, greedy descents. And we just put those one after another. And that, that just shown to give pretty strong solutions to the SVM problem. And the huge advantage of um, stochastic gradient descent is almost trivial to parallelize. And uh, we actually just published a paper improving that particular parallelization. Um, so we just uh, take the overall objective function here and um, we just uh, look at the gradient and we move down the uh, steepest descent point. And we introduce a learning rate, which is the stochastic gradient descent is small, because in the idea of the stochastic gradient descent is that it takes smaller steps than people used to do. And you do lots of them. And the advantage of doing lots of small steps is you don't get trapped in the local minima. And so this is, it's, I mean, this is a real discovery of the people doing deep learning. And the stochastic gradient descent actually addressed um, the um, local minima problem. So, this is a very scalable, and we can get much better performance using either the standard parallel algorithms, technology MPI, or by other forms of parallelism. And uh, it actually ends up being more or less as accurate as the other methods. I mean, this is a standard example of heuristics. You have all these different methods, and they're all surprisingly good. And we can also use nonlinear uh, classifications by just doing SVM, but instead of on the original point, we apply a function to those points. And um, we can sometimes use GPUs to calculate those functions. Note that as I mentioned right at the beginning, SVM is actually not used as much as it used to be, because it's a, it used to be the basic classification approach. But now deep learning, at least for large problems, is a much more powerful um, classification method which appears to have much better properties. Because that's top of the SVM is just drawing lines. Well, if the points aren't separated by lines, but in a more complicated curve, then you have to guess that by taking kernels and map those points around. But that is not systematic. The huge advantage of deep learning is it does it in a systematic fashion where you don't have to guess the kernel. All right, that's the end of SVM, an important algorithm Wherever there's, it's sort of a mature algorithm, I say, not much is, not much advances, it's just getting used on a daily basis. Thank you.